Without any frame of reference, a simple raw score provides relatively little information. To make raw scores more meaningful, they're often transformed into new values that contain more information. It would be useful to have a statistical technique that can identify and describe the exact location of every score in a distribution. The z-score combines the raw score, the mean and the standard deviation into a single number that precisely describes an exact location relative to the other scores in the distribution. It would also be useful to have a statistical tool that allows us to make meaningful comparisons between variables measured in different scales. For example, we measure height in inches but weight in pounds. In order to compare heights and weights, we need a way to put different variables in the same standardized scale. Z-scores also give us this ability to convert any variable to a standard distribution, allowing us to make comparisons among variables. Standardizing allows immediate familiarity and quick orientation. In statistics, scores and distributions of scores can differ widely. Standardizing scores and distributions can help to place data in a general context and allow us to directly compare them. Z-scores transform each X value into a sign number. The sign of a Z-score tells you immediately whether the score is located above or below the mean, while a numerical value tells you the number of standard deviations from the mean. IQ tests are usually standardized to have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. In a distribution of IQ scores, a score of X equals 130 would be transformed into Z equals plus 2. The Z value indicates that the score is located above the mean by a distance of two standard deviations, i.e. 30 IQ points. This figure shows a population distribution with various positions identified by their Z-score values. Notice that all Z-scores above the mean are positive, and all Z-scores below the mean are negative. A z-score of plus 1 corresponds to a position exactly one standard deviation above the mean. A z-score of plus 2 is always located exactly two standard deviations above the mean. The locations identified by z-scores are the same for all distributions, no matter what mean or standard deviation the distribution may have. The formula for transforming scores into z-scores is z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. The numerator of the equation, x minus mu, is a deviation score. It measures the distance in points between x and mu, and indicates whether x is located above or below the mean. The deviation score is then divided by sigma, because we want the z-score to measure distance in terms of standard deviation units. Although z-scores are most commonly used in the context of a population, the same principles can be used to identify individual locations within a sample, provided that you use the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Let's run through three quick examples. Example 1. A distribution of scores has a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 10. What z-score corresponds to a score of x equals 70? 70 minus 90 divided by 10 equals a z-score of minus 2. Example 2. A distribution of scores has a mean of 37 and a standard deviation of 4. What z-score corresponds to a score of x equals 39? 39 minus 37 divided by 4 equals a z-score of 0.5. Example 3. A distribution of scores has a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 5. If we have a z-score of minus 1, what does that correspond to in terms of x? We need to rearrange the z-score formula so that x equals mu plus z times sigma and then substitute in the values. Minus 1 times 5 equals minus 5. Minus 5 plus 40 gives us an x value of 35. It's possible to transform every x value in a distribution into a corresponding z-score. The result of this process is an entire distribution of z-scores. 
What effect does this z-score transformation have on the original distribution? Because each individual score stays in its same position within the distribution, the overall shape of the distribution does not change. The z-score distribution will always have a mean of 0 and will always have a standard deviation of 1. You can think of the z-score transformation as simply relabeling the values along the x-axis. That is, after a z-score transformation, you still have the same distribution, but now each individual is labeled with a z-score instead of an x-value. Here's another example of this with a distribution of IQ scores. Let's look at a couple of examples to illustrate standardization in action. Example 4. Eric competes in two track events, standing long jump and javelin. His long jump was 49 inches and his javelin throw was 92 feet. He then measures all the competitors in both events and calculates the mean and standard deviation. The javelin competitors had a mean of 86 feet and a standard deviation of 10, while the long jump competitors had a mean of 44 inches and a standard deviation of 4. So which event did Eric do best in? Standardizing the jumping and throwing variables for these two different sporting events allows us to make a meaningful comparison between the two. Eric's javelin result standardized into a z-score is 0 0.6 while his long jump z-score is 1.25. 1.25 is further away from the mean than 0.6. It shows us that Eric was more exceptional in the long jump event than in the javelin. Example 5. Rose has high blood pressure but exercises. She has a wellness score of 84 on a scale with a mean of 93 and a standard deviation of 4.5. Isabel is of normal weight but has high cholesterol. She has a wellness score of 332 on a scale with a mean of 312 and a standard deviation of 20. Using z-scores to standardise their different wellness variables, who's in better health? Standardising their data into z-scores gives Rose a z-score of minus 2 while Isabel has a z-score of plus 1. Isabel is in better health because her score is above the mean, whereas Rose is below average by two standard deviations. So to sum up, z-scores combine information regarding the score, the mean and the standard deviation into a single number that precisely describes the location of a score relative to other scores in the distribution. And a second purpose for z-scores is to standardize an entire distribution so we can have meaningful comparisons between different variables.